And really, the trickiest part about this whole deal here now is getting little worm gears with their bushings and their little hex pieces all back into the right spots. So there's a little bushing and hex and worm gear. Just give these a little scrub down and rinse. Make sure we don't have any metal filings in there. So what we have to do so I got the motor set in there, not locked down. What we've got to do is get these little bushings back on here. And you see there's an open side. So we've got to get the hex in the hole. And we've got to get the open sides up and down on both of them at the same time. Okay, there we go, got one in. Now we go to do this end. Put it in the flywheel, flyweight. Get that rotated to the right orientation, get it started down in there. And everybody started. Okay. Check to make sure my clips are engaged, which they are. Make sure my wires stay out of the way. Mm, not quite lined up. Okay, and it just snaps in there once we get the frame together. It's not bolted together, but it's put together. They just go up in like that. And they'll stay there while we get our screws. And the screws go in here. Tighten that down. Tighten that one down. Double check in here. Making sure that's pushed up where it belongs. And this one. He belongs. Okay. Before we get going too far, we're going to take our little tester, little multi tester, and we're going to check for uh, shorts. This side of the frame to this side of the frame should have no continuity. Okay. When we plug in the light board, it has some continuity, little residual continuity through the, the motor. Okay, we get that light board plugged in. The last two little pieces we need to try this are these two little brushes, or little pickups, I should say. Not really brushes. They go from the top of the, oops, from the top of the uh, trucks and transmit power to each side. Okay, and there's a little tab. So they're locked in here and they have to run under this little tab at each end. Alright, same on the other side. Now don't dislodge this one while you're getting this one in. Okay, that's set. Now we should be able to go put that on the uh, track and have something happen besides explosive uh, smoke pouring out of it. Let's see what happens. Okay, by default, locos should be program or decoders should be programmed to three, uh, which is what we're set at. Power's on on the track. 
but I am not seeing anybody going. And I'm not seeing any lights. The good news is I'm not seeing any shorts. The short circuit detections not active on this. So that means it's not shorted and there hasn't been any smoke pour out of the decoder so that's a, always a good sign. My guess is that I have the LEDs wired in backwards and that's what's not letting it work. We'll shoot troubleshoot that. It's always a good idea to hook power to the track before you try and test your locomotive. So here we go again. We're on Loco 3. Make sure I've got the power routed the right way. We're hooked up. Nothing. Nothing. It doesn't smell hot and I'm not getting a, uh, a uh, short detection from my Zephyr. Let me pull this guy out. Send him off to the side here. Hey, we've got movement. Look at that. We really had movement. Okay, we've got movement but no lights. And what that means is that we've got the lights hooked up backwards. So I've got to reverse my white and blue wires, which is not that bad. I, I can fix that in a jiffy. I swapped the wires just on this one end just to see. And look at that. We have a headlight. I've put the shell back on. The handrails are all attached. Um, and we're on the track and I need to do some fine tuning and set the address but the little locomotive I have to get quite high on the uh, throttle setting to get it to move but it does move and it runs back and forth uh, so the decoders installs good and I can go ahead and build my little rotating beacon unit and get it installed and it should just hook right up. The problem I had with the lights was that the blue and the white and the yellow wires were on the wrong pegs on the LED boards so I just swapped them and uh, that's all working now. The wires for the motor and the pickups are hooked up correctly so forward is forward without monkeying with any CVs. I don't have a dimmer and if you want to be able to dim these, it, they should dim, I probably have to go back in and not uh, take the resistor out, uh, take the resistor out of the circuit so that uh, the, it's getting full voltage. But for right now, this is good enough. I'll, I'll run it this way because it runs. I'll tweak all the CVs for the, the starting voltage, put in my top speed, and my acceleration curve, set my momentum, all that sort of jazz, and set the address to a four digit address. And now I have another locomotive on my roster. I bought this one several years ago. It was $102.95, marked down to $79.95, and I think it was probably less than that when I bu actually bought it. It was on a sale or something like that. So I got it for 50 bucks. Well, the DZ143 decoders are about, I think I paid like $29.95, $29, something like that for them. So, for less than $100, I've got a really nice uh, DCC equipped locomotive. Yes, I had to do some work. It works well. And I'm sure it will probably pull anything I want to pull. Let's run up here and grab some cars. So 
So you can see it's got plenty of pulling power. It's pulling all the cars plus my little switcher. But I've got a problem here. Is my shell is not fitting all the way down on here. So I'm going to have to pull that back off. Okay, that was better. That's better. I had a little wire bunched up in there. Now it's sitting down good. Got to make sure your wires fit down into that slot that we carved. There we go. What I'm going to do next time is I'm going to build the little engineering rotary beacon, get it wired up, tested, and we'll drill the shell for the little beacon and put it on here. Um, that's my next project. Uh, while I'm at it, I will probably take my little RS3 here. Take my little RS3 and on this one, because it has conversion pilots, I have to pull the coupler pockets out to get the shell off. But I want to change this decoder. This is a DZ123, or yeah, I think it's a 123. 123 in it, it doesn't have the extra function. I, I can put the uh, put the rotary beacon on it without it, but since I'm taking it all the way all the way apart, I may as well put the DZ143 in here so that I can control whether the beacon is on or off, separate from the lights and all that sort of jazz. Originally, I didn't like the little uh, decoder in the Bachman, but it's working pretty good now that the little engines bro broke in. Um, it doesn't support uh, five, four digit addressing though, so I was thinking I might take the decoder out of this engine and put it in the Bachman. Some of you guys have asked for the little steam locomotive, so there's my little Riverasi steam loco, and what I have planned for it is a DN144 PS with sound. Okay, so you see, it's got it's got the plug on it, which we'll sacrifice. It's got a couple extra leads. Those are because this has those extra functions. I can put beacons or red tail lights or whatever I want on this. If this thing runs, this decoder will be back in here. Um, There'll be a few wires running between the tender and the and the loco on this thing, but that's the speaker for it, and it should fit in there with the decoder. It has sound in the tender. Um, there's one more component to this little setup, which is that little capacitor right there. Uh, little uh, inside now. They ship, uh, Digitrax ships this capacitor with it. What most of guys have been doing have been going to the super caps that are surface mount and putting them on here because they're so much smaller. You can see how big this is going to be. It should still fit. I may use it if I, if I get in there and, and there's enough room. I may still use it. But that's what most guys and scale guys have been doing. Uh, yeah, I know these have the big flanges and everything on them, but if this thing runs, I'll, I'll get it all tuned up. We'll get it wired just for DC. Check it out. If it runs good, we'll do the, the DCC conversion on it. So that's something to look forward to next time. See you later.